And of course, you know, we are thankful for the life given, the keeper of life. And I welcome you into the shock of the hour. This is the this is a segment of the mystic vibration, basically the meat, the meat of the program where we go into the actual topic subject for the evening. And this evening we'll be dealing with a bit of Bible mystery and uh, a very simple thing. We want to touch upon the character known as Fihinas and I want to deal with Fahinas in the realms of um, I want to deal with Fahinas in the realms of longevity. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. As I said, we're going to be dealing with a little Bible mystery. Now, of course, again, this is the Mystic Vibration. Honorable Priest Isaac here with you on a wonderful Monday evening. This is the seventh day of May to be official. This might be. You know, you might be hearing a, re a replay of this sometime, but I'm just letting you know when it was officially put together. Live and direct Radio Anu. This is Radio Anu. www.radioanu.com This is the international flavor, the universal spice. And again, this is the shock of the hour. A bit of Bible mystery. And um, let me just say, before we go into the realms of such that we're going to be looking at this to some degree in the way that it is presented to us and put the the, the whole mystic to it as well now when you speak about the character known as Fihinas Fihinas in the Bible an individual that is not highlighted over and over and over again it's definitely not one of the main characters that you hear about so when you hear about um, you know biblical characters of course you will definitely hear of moses and you'll definitely hear of um, abraham and david and solomon and then you may come down the line and touch upon a few other people the, the different tribes and of course, um, what you call it, um, um, Samuel, Samson, whoever the case may be. But when it comes to Fihinas, this is a person you do not hear too much about. But he exists and he is in the Bible. Now, he stands out in the book of Numbers. In the book of Numbers chapter 25 the seventh verse of that book and it says and when Fihinas the son of Eliseia the son of Aaron the priest now this is very key because there are other Fihinases in the Bible one or two scattered you hear the name mentioned and this will be very key for as we go along one or two scattered you hear their names mentioned and at the same time when you observe the 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 Fihina's characters i think samuel had a son by the name of Fihina's too not samuel no 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 eli the priest yeah had a son by the name of Fihina's. all right but this Fihina's here he is the son of Elysia. He is who is the son of Aaron. So this Fihinas that we are speaking of here in Numbers chapter 25, who has his, his shining moment basically in, in, in religion in the seventh verse of this chapter. This Fihinas is the grandson. Let's get this good. This Fihinas is the grand son of Aaron. It's right here in the Bible. And when Fihinas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, saw what? he rose up from among the congregation 
and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the, 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 the man of Israel into the tent and pierced both of them through. Now, maybe we, you know, a bit premature there. Let us begin from the sixth verse. And then behold, one of the sons of Israel came and brought to his relatives a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the sons of Israel. And while they were weeping in the doorway of the tent of the meeting, when Phineas saw, the, when Phineas, the son of Elysia, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he arose from the midst of the congregation and took a spear in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and pierced both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through the body. So the plague. Uh, on the sons of Israel was checked according to the, the new American uh, so-called standard Bible. So if, you, if you're not acquainted with this brother here, that's an introduction there uh, to him for you. So what was happening here? The children of Israel, as it says, the congregation of the sons of Israel, while they were weeping at the doorway of the tent of, uh, of, of the tent of meeting, meaning they were weeping over basically the same thing. The children of Israel, you know, they displeased the Almighty, the Lord, because they were taking other wives and mingling with other nations and and dealing with their gods and all of these different things and this wasn't something that was pleasing with the Lord at all. So the Lord stepped in and said, listen Moses, this ain't going to work and the children was, was fasting and mourning before the tent of the tabernacle saying, oh forgive us for what we have done wrong and while they prayed and getting on and asking for the cleansing power. Here comes this brother now, Zimri, his name is, if I'm not mistaken, Zimri and, 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 and Cosby should be the woman. So in comes Zimri now, and he comes in with a Midianite woman, or a Midianitish woman. And this is something, this is something that was totally against. You know, this is why they were weeping and mourning. Although I may add that Moses also himself came ac across the high priest of Midian and he took one of her daughters. Nobody was slain for that, but I'm just showing you that's right in the scripture, straight up, straight, straight, straight up. You know that, don't you? You know that. But anyway, let's deal with this. So here we have Fihinas now observing all of this and he's saying to himself, but we. They see us here, going through a ritual, trying to cleanse ourselves from the wickedness that was done unto us. And here he come in with a woman, not from amongst us. And this brother here took up a javelin in his hands, according to the, the scripture, and went into the tent after them and pierced both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through the body and because of that what the people was crying and bawling for all the fasting and begging the Almighty to stop the sickness and the diseases and the plague that was amongst them it was the murder the killing of Zimri and Cos Cosby that stopped the plague and because of that Fihinas was granted this ever-living priesthood throughout all generations. This ever-living priesthood 
throughout all generations. This is mystic. So when you consider now, we want to like to home in on this understanding here of this brother, this individual. And because of this, you comprehend that he was given an ever-living priesthood, a priesthood that will live on throughout all generations. Now this is what it says here, you know. Listen to it good. And he went in after the man and after that. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And that though they, those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Fehinas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, hath turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was jealous, no, zealous, for my sake among them, that I consume not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore, say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it, and his seed after him, even the covenant of an ever-living priesthood. Yeah. Because he was zealous for, he, for, for his God, and made an atonement for the children of Israel. Now the name of the Israelites that was slain um, well we tell you that already Zimri and Cosby so yeah there it is words of the almighty Fihinas so he's not mentioned too much in the bible you could see him um, in Exodus chapter 6 when it shows you that an, an, an Aaron's son Eliezer married one of the daughters of Putiel and she bore him Fihinas these are the heads of the fathers of the household of, um, of, of, of Israel, you know. So you don't see Fihinas mentioned that much, really, you know, in, in, outside of, of, of this. All right, so that's a good way for us to start. And what I want to do now, I'm looking at a, 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 a list here entitled biblical longevity and what this is giving you this is basically telling you you know the the oldest person in the bible coming down and it starts here with you know who is the oldest person it says methuselah now what i'm trying to say here methuselah's father is enoch isn't Enoch older than Methuselah? You see, there's a lady in Dominica by the name of Ma Pompey. And she passed on when she was 127 years old. And when you look in the list of the oldest uh, people, um, uh, the oldest people that lived, although she's older than them, they don't have her name in the list. And this is something we in the Caribbean know. She lived to be 127. Abraham's wife, Sarah, lived to be 127 as well. And Ma Israel from Dominica lived to be 127. Check the mystic. But as far as the oldest coming down the line as those who lived as, as far as the Bible has it, Methuselah, is the oldest but what about his father Enoch well Enoch never died so you have to die to be the oldest Enoch is older than him if he never died 
Enoch is the oldest. But anyway, Methuselah. All right, how long did he live? 969 years. Wow, that's a long time, man. Jared, how long did he live? 962 years. Okay. Noah, how long did he live? 950 years. Okay. Adam, 930 years. Seth, 912 years. Kenan, 910 years. These brothers live in some serious age, man. Enos, 905 years. Wow. Maha, Maha, La, Liel, 895. We're going down now. Lamech, 777. We're going down now. Shem, 600 years. Eh, eh. Eber, 464. May I tell you. Kai, um, Canaan, they are 460. Um, um, Arpak, Arpak Shad, 438. Salah, 433. Enoch, 365. But Enoch never died. Oh, you we give Enoch 365. All right. He never died. It should be a shame to put that there. Peg leg, 239. Real, 239. Serag, 230. Job, hmm. 210, question mark. Tira, 205. Isaac, 180. Abraham, 175. Nahor, 148. Coming down the line, boy. Jacob, 147. Esau, 147. Ishmael, 137. Levi, 137. Aram 137, Kohath 133, Laban 130, Debra 130, and we go down and we go down and we go down and we keep Joshua 110. Ain't gonna keep, let me just give you Moses 120, Joseph 110, Aaron 123. All right, you get the idea. All right. Did you see Fihinas's name in that? Line up there. Who? Fihinas. Did you see his name in the lineup? No. Okay. Fihinas. Why? Why? Why you think he should be in there? No, I just wanted to know if you saw his name. No, you didn't see his name. All right. How long did he live? I, I'm not too sure. Okay. Now remember, we just remember, we just went through an official. Um, biblical longevity list and Fihinas is not there. Why do you keep saying that? Fihinas, you know, that the son of Elysia, the son of Aaron, he's not in the longevity list. Will you quit saying that? You keep saying that. It sounds dumb. Why do you want him to be in the list? He's not amongst, you know, those that live Methuselah and even Enoch and, and, and what's wrong with you? But the Bible said he was given an everlasting priesthood. Doesn't mean he's going to live forever. You sure? Of course I'm sure. Okay. If you say so. In the book of Judges. The book of Judges is an interesting book, eh? And since we were doing some level of mathematics there, I said I found it interesting when you go through the whole aspect of the book of Judges before Israel received the king, the king, King Saul. You, you go through the lineage here of the rulers. You have Othi, uh, Othniel, Othniel was, I think, the first judge of Israel. The time of judges is seen in the book of, of, of Judges. And Othniel was an individual that uh, ruled for 40 years. Ehud ruled for 80 years. These are different judges. 
Then after him came Shamgar, and his time frame of ruling is not necessarily known. And then Deborah and Barak, they ruled for 40 years, and Gideon ruled for 40 years. And you see, you see the whole aspect of the 40 years, you know, we've gone into a level of science with this 40 years. That's why Othniel is 40 years, and Deborah and Barak is 40 years, and, 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 and Gideon is 40 years, and we will reach down to Eli, and he's 40 years, and, and 40 years in the wilderness, and 40 days and 40 nights and and i think david as well solomon and several people 40 and 44 years they rule on the throne even down to his majesty see this the numbers of the 40 and these different things there's a science within it but let's continue abemelech he judged israel for three years tola 23 years jair 22 years um 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 Jaf, 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 Jafta, six years, Ibzan, seven years, Elon, ten years, Abdon, eight years, Samson, twenty years, Eli, forty years, Samuel, twelve years until Saul was made king. And uh, if you go through this period you get approximately because some some is unknown as well and you get approximately 450 years give and take and when you consider that 450 years also okay all right so this is a time of judges and when we understand the time of judges, let's just do this quickly. So 40 and 40, that's 80. Plus 80, you have uh, 160 plus 40. You already have 200 there. Uh, and plus 50, 250, uh, plus 10, 260, uh, plus 10, 300, um, 20 and 40. Yes, there you go, 400. Let us say 400 years. So we have approximately 400 years for the judges all right okay that's good right fair enough now in the book of judges you see israel before the actual coming in of king saul when you read the book of judges it speaks about in the last two chapters you know there was war taking place as usually there is war in the bible and listen to this chapter 20 verse 27 listen to this good this is very key and the children of israel inquired of the lord for the ark of the covenant of god was there in those days wow ark still around in those days and the children of Israel inquired of the Lord, for the Ark of the Covenant of God was there in those day, days. Pardon. And Fihinas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days. And I find it interesting. You see, the Bible have a way of putting things uh, the, 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 as if they're stressing in those days. Like, don't, don't lose this point. What point? In those days. What do you mean? Fihinas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron. Yeah. He stood before the ark. So what? In those days. All right. Saying, shall I yet again? Shall I yet again, shall I yet again go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother, or shall I see it? Question. And the Lord said, go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into thine hand. So what's all you reading about? No, we're just reading our Bible. What's wrong? A chapter a day chase the devil away you have something better to do 
Let's read our Bibles. So, Fihinas now, not any old Fihinas, the son of Elysia, this Fihinas, the grandson of Aaron. At the end of the book of Judges, so the book of Judges is coming to an end now. So this 400 to 450 year period, approximately, is coming to an end. And close to the end of this period here, we have Fihinas standing before the Ark of the Covenant. Because according to this, he stood, he still was standing before the Ark of the Covenant. In those days, in brackets in a man, in those days, as if to, 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 to dig the reader, in those days. So you have to understand, as when we did that, episode on the seven women taking hold of one man according to the book of Isaiah they were stressing and in that day so when you hear and in that day you want to know which day and in those days in those days which days these are the days with the war Israel Benjamin these are the days coming to the end of the era of the judges so from the beginning, from Othniel Uf, to coming down to close to, 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 to Samuel, in the coming in of Eli, Samuel, Samson, Abdon, we're dealing with a period of at least four centuries that have passed, 400 years at least that have passed. And at the end of this time frame, Fihinas, the son of Elysia, the son of Aaron, is still standing before the ark. You don't get my point yet? Okay, hold on. So the 400 period to 450 year period of the judges. What was happening prior to that? What are the books in the Bible before the judges? You got the book of Joshua. You got the whole book of Joshua. So what's the time span between Joshua chapter 1 and Joshua chapter finish? What's the time span when Joshua was given the mandate from Moses to when he moved on? From my understanding of theological study, you have about the next 40 years there. as a kind of next 40 year period he played with. Hmm. And then... You still have a period where you have 40 years in the wilderness. So that will give you about 80 years. And I'm adding that 80 years onto the 400 to 450 years we have of the judges. In fact, I'm going to shave it down. Let's just call it 500 years altogether. 500 years altogether. Because when Joshua was given the mandate to take over Israel and Moses came off of the sea, this was after, listen to me, this was after Numbers chapter 25 verse 7 when Fihinas, when Fihinas, when Fihinas, the son of Elysia, the son of Aaron took the javelin and murdered, killed. Kill Zibri and Cosby. Kill. Destroy them for committing such in the sight of the Lord. This is how the story goes. So after dealing with them, he was given an ever-living priesthood. Wow. Now Israel was 40 years roaming through the wilderness. And this is what I'm saying. That obviously all of this took place somewhere within the 40 year span of them rolling through the wilderness. When he killed the Israelite and the Midianite woman for wrapping up together. When he went into the tent and he dealt with their cases. This is Fihinas I'm speaking of. Which one? 
the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, when he did that to them. This was maybe during the time of the 40 years in the wilderness, that the children of Israel were in the wilderness for 40 years. Then you have Moses moving on and Joshua becoming the general and ruling Israel and really doing the work for about what? 40 years. And then you have all these judges of Israel from, 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 from Abimelech and Tola and Jair and Samson and Othniel and Ehud and Shamgar and Deborah and, and Barak and Gideon and Samuel and Eli and, and more and more and, and that whole time span brings you to about four centuries or four and a half centuries and we say listen for for good leverage and I know we can't be wrong from the time Fihinas stabbed them people in the tent to the time that he appeared listen to the time that he appeared again in Judges chapter 20 Fihinas in Judges chapter 20 standing before the ark of the covenant that is at least a period of 500 years that is at least a period of 500 years now when Fihinas killed these people i'm sure he was not a toddler i'm sure he was not a little boy i'm sure he had age on him Are you there? How old is Fihinas? Can somebody tell me? Can some Bible scholar tell me? That's why we deal with subjects we don't even hear people speak about. I never heard no one discuss the age of Fihinas. You don't even hear them speak about Fihinas. Who is this Fihinas? How come he lived so long? I never hear nobody talk about him. I just read a list. I just read a list of the oldest set of people in the bible and Fahinas is not amongst them somebody overlooked this man he's seen standing before the ark of the covenant in the last days of the era of the judges in the last days of the era of the judges you can see Fahinas in front of the ark the tribe of Levi Better Levi, the son of Aaron, grandson, you know, still son, keeping on the tradition up to now. 500 years ago, he, he killed the man and the woman in the tent. Up to now, how come he's still around? Hey, hey, what he eating so? We don't live to 500 years anymore. That was in the days of Methuselah. Joshua lived to be 110. Yeah, we don't live to be that long anymore. Joshua lived to be 110. So how come he come to be 500 and he's not 500? It was 500 years or more. And more than likely, it's not less. It's not less than 500 years. So more than likely, it's more than 500 years. According to the chronology of this book that we're supposed to accept that when Fihinas um, destroyed the, the mixed multitude couple there. After he dealt with that, 500 and plus years after, he's seen standing before the Ark of the Covenant. Right in the Bible. Or well, maybe it's a different Fihinas. No man, read it for yourself. No, 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 no. Chapter 20, verse 28. And Fihinas, the son of Elysia. Hmm? the son of Aaron. Who else you think you're talking? Who are you talking about? What do you mean? The Bible gives you the chronology of these people. Eh? So, I'm just showing you. With, with you know, good understanding, Moses lived to be 120. At this time, Joshua 110. You know, I mean, even, even some of the, 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 the those that preceded them, Levi 137 and, and Joseph and so 110 as well, Abraham 175, 
you know it is it is the characters way back in the creation time like the the um the the noah and these ones as i said enoch 365 before he shut off um no one 950 you know and, and and these individuals here eber and shem 600 you know people like fihinas in that day they weren't like living that long that was a strange thing for anybody living any 110 um beyond that certain number and that was the number people living 110 easy today in the caribbean in certain places so i'm just showing you that especially those of us who are bible believers that's why we need to kind of be you know some of us be too dogmatic we don't want to hear nothing from nobody you can't teach me nothing i know everything and look at a simple thing like this look at a simple thing like this i would like to see the person that could honestly say you know i checked that already i've been telling people this all the time hmm? I'm not saying they don't exist, you know, but I mean, when you see me highlight that the land of Israel is from the river Euphrates to the river in Egypt, although it's right there in plain sight, I never hear nobody stress the point. I hear people say that the true Israelites are black people and Africans and all of, all of these different things, but just to, to, to take your time and to say from the river Euphrates to the great sea, the setting of the sun and the great seas to the south, and the Mediterranean Sea is not the Great Sea and, and, and the book of Ezekiel say that there's an East Sea and you can explain these different things. It's right there in the Bible. And Bethlehem is to the west of the River Nile. It's right there in the Bible. Nobody can dispute that. But yet still, we still don't see these things. And it's right there. So Fihinas now, again, the fact that something is missing here so here lies a character that you need to pay more attention to. You pay attention to Moses. You pay attention to David. You pay attention to Solomon for whatever reason because these were the superstars given to us in, you know, Sunday school. So what happened to Fihinas now? He seems to be a serious champion. He still, he with the ark for hundreds of years, at least. And not because we read of him in Judges 20, mean that after in, in, in chapter 21 he passed on. Because there's no record here saying anything happened to him. He never said he died. Never said he lived for the next 10 years. In fact, they never said nothing. He just happened to show up 500 years after standing before the Ark of the Covenant in the end of the era of the book of Judges. This is work to do. Research. Sharpen your sword. Understand the thing that you say you believe in and you follow and all of that. You know? You sharpen your mind. Sharpen the wits. Ask your pastor about this. And, 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 and you know, tell me, I'm not challenging you. I just want the clarity. What's going on here with Fihinas? Who is he? Yeah. Holy oh, Manuel Eyes. Ja Rastafari. So give thanks, brothers and sisters, with such comprehension, you know. Because, of course, you know, we're dealing with a solo book. Many people ask all the time, how is it that, um, you know, how Moses could write the books? his own books and write about his own death and all of these different things. And I highlight the same thing with Samuel. Samuel died in Samuel chapter one. Samuel chapter one, you know, Samuel done off the scene in Samuel chapter one. But yet still, not chapter one, pardon me. First Samuel, you have two books of Samuel. First Samuel and second Samuel. And, and Samuel died in first Samuel. And, and you still have a second Samuel writing story about what happened after Samuel died. So who is this Samuel writing this story here so, after Samuel died? So um, <clears throat> you mean first Samuel is, is the father of second Samuel? Okay. All right. 
Well, you see, that's how wisdom comes out, you know, because that's that's obviously a, 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 another way of looking at it. Yeah, another way of looking at it. Very brilliant analogy, Honorable Prince, because within that, the Father does live in the Son, and easy is, is all of that, because there is this allegory given in the book of Samuel that gives this impression as if Samuel was resurrected. And how I how I personally come to that conclusion is, you know, as they say, the trail, the evidence. When Samuel came out of the ground, they say gods came out of the earth before him. And when you study any um, resurrection theology, the, the person that is being resurrected is um he 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 follows he's preceded by uh, by other dead people then <laughs> let's proceed that <laughs> yeah like yeah for example in the in the apocrypha and the apocrypha when you go through the, the the last book of eden the hidden books of the bible it speaks about those that rose up before christ even in the bible it says when christ resurrected the, the, the graves were open and the dead walked amongst many and all of these kind of different things. So it is well known when the Savior is resurrected, gods or other beings that were in the earth comes up literally before the Savior. So, yeah, so what that highlights to me, you know, is deep stuff. So, so, so that is seen in the book of Samuel. So Samuel resurrected one way or the other. Even the way you just explained, his son, because... That's the whole science of even the Son of God and all of that. As you said, his son, because the, the New Testament says when Christ appeared unto his disciple, he appeared in another form. So it was him. I mean, that hasn't necessarily been him, but it was him because he appeared in another form. You know, in, in another gospel, he was with them for days. They were hiking, they were camping, they were eating, they were drinking. You know, they didn't have on a Halloween mask. They could look in his face. They could see who he was. But they didn't know it was the Christ. And he just did one thing. The Bible said he just dipped his bread or blessed his food a specific way. And when he did that, they noticed who he was. And what that is saying, you know, without taking it in this simplistic form. Basically, what he's trying to show you is that the, the Christ himself... It's not just the way he dipped the bread or the way he dipped the cup or the way he said the prayer. Lord, it's his ways. That's what the scriptures try to tell you. That this man that was moving with them, they observed his ways. Not just dipping bread, but his ways, his attitude, his culture, his precepts, the laws he kept. And he, he, he was keeping the laws of the Christ. He was keeping the precepts of the Christ. You know, the things that Christ would do, he would do. You know, the same science that Christ upkept. He is upkeeping the same science. It must be the Christ return again. Because according to the Bible, he appeared to them in what? In another form. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a deep thing here. And I think the, the Fihina's mystery is something to look into. And something that should spark some level of conversation and i'm inviting my listeners to leave a comment you know i don't usually do that but i'm inviting you to leave a comment on this specific subject there may be something about it that um, i've overlooked uh, because i always found it to be an interesting subject and what is interesting about it it's overlooked in contemporary religion and theology and all of that nobody by the way that there so you can leave a comment as well. And let me just remind everyone once again, we are looking forward to the 21st day of December. Yesterday we had a wonderful hike the Green Castle Hill. We had about 40 to 50 people that came out. I mean, amongst the megaliths, remember, all you have to do is visit my, my YouTube channel, Priest Isaac's YouTube channel. In fact, you know, we are definitely looking to upload a lot of new videos and pictures from the some of the latest tours that we did to Green Castle Hill. So you have a better idea, a better comprehension of, you know, what is there, uh, what we offer 
at Greencastle Hill for your whole science, you know. So we're having the solstice, the solstice hike and tour, the winter solstice hike and tour uh, to Greencastle Hill. Our morning hike will be the 21st day, Friday the 21st day of uh, December. And the afternoon hike, like yesterday, we had a wonderful afternoon hike. That will be the 23rd day of December. And as I said, this is the hike to Green Castle Hill. And for those who may be hearing this for the first time, although this video is not directly designed for that, what I would say to you is that we um well as i said you could visit our youtube channel and there you would find different videos that are prepared directly daily with green castle hill also known as mount anu almost anything dealing with antigua so a lot of you who i know will be in the cold during that time you know if you're looking for somewhere to go you can come and join your good brother priest isaac you know, I, I am not a, a figure that is hard to, to, you know, communicate with at all. You know, so I'm inviting you to literally come to the Caribbean, come to Antigua if you're already in the Caribbean, you know, and spend seven days approximately with us. As I said, uh, all you would have to do is prepare, of course, your transportation, meaning that your plane ticket, obviously, we uh we did not have any intention of doing this project in any connection whatsoever with any flight agency or or booking agency maybe the future maybe before we reach to that date something may arise but or in the future but for now we are just um, trying to keep it as less complicated as we can so once you can assure yourself between now and december that you could of course purchase your ticket to reach to this neck of the woods we will take it from there obviously we will have a package prepared you'll be with us for seven days um, the package obviously would would include your accommodation and of course your meals as well and you will tell us what you need and what you don't need you, for whatever reason you may have accommodations already set with someone you know or maybe depending on your way of eating you may prefer to deal with that on your own part it doesn't make a difference to us we just want to make sure you're happy when you come amongst us and as i tell you you know you know as your brother and your friend even though i may not have ever met you we are we'll be setting the package you know to 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 be as um economical towards you as possible you know and that is one of the main things so you could just come and have a wonderful time we'll make sure that you those of you who need to to take in the sun and take in the sea and take in the sun taking the good fruits taking the air you know taking the green herbs and when we say herbs all the herbs remember this is antigua now this is the home of marijuana trust me there ain't no way on earth you can compare to here when it comes to the home of marijuana. Yeah, they say just 15 ounces, you know, and four trees. You're dealing with Priest Isaac, you know. The, when, he, when, when it comes to Priest Isaac and it comes to the Rastafari community in Antigua, it's a totally different thing from anywhere else in the world, you know. So look forward to coming down and spending a moment with us. And I'm definitely encouraging everyone, you know, to definitely tell a friend and one of the main attractions the main attraction will be green castle hill and i'm encouraging you to you know continue to listen at least to this channel to our radio station as well where we will continue to enlighten you on exactly what is taking place as it refers to the very same green castle hill and what is taking place there these are countless of megaliths that align with the heavens you cannot compare green castle hill to me to uh, well to most megalithic sites because of the natural nature of it oh my well the people that we took up there yesterday saw the destruction and and how they're destroying green castle hill some of them actually wept 
and you could obviously understand why because they saw the beauty of the hill they saw the natural stones megaliths that are protruding out the hill aligning themselves with the heavens and then on the other side of the hill they see the quarry companies destroying the hill of course it would hurt them you know it would hurt anyone so we had a wonderful time yesterday and those of you who are in the international community no matter where you are i really hope that you can come and join us all you have to do is just email me even if you're not sure you're coming just email me so at least i have your email and you know as time proceeds i could send you more information giving you an idea how the whole project is coming along exactly what would you need to do if you intend to come and exactly what the program lineup will be you know we're gonna have media day and all of these different things so just send me an email and say priest isaac i am interested in coming to antigua for december for the the summer solstice hiking tour to green castle hill also known as mount Anu with towns so of course and of course remember please free please please feel free to subscribe to the mystic vibration program this program comes to you each and every monday tuesday wednesday and thursday at the hour of 6 pm right here on radio anu radioanu.com right here live and direct and the shock of the hour which is the integral part of the program as i said when you subscribe it's a monthly subscription my brothers and sisters you only play um, um pay a small monthly fee very small monthly fee and you get all the programs right um in your inbox email we email it to your inbox as soon as the program is done so even if you missed the program you didn't hear the program whatever the case is you're sure to get a copy of the evening's mystic vibration tonight tomorrow whenever once you are a subscriber not to the youtube channel you can subscribe to the youtube channel too please do and give the videos some thumbs up when you watch them as well but i'm talking about um, subscribing to the monthly package so to do that you could also email me you could um, contact me via whatsapp or give me a text or call uh, my area code area code 1268 728 3162 all right and email priest isaac 27 at gmail.com one two six eight seven two eight three one six two if you know your bible and you do not know the your history the knowledge of your bible will become a mystery and take some realize to realize to realize that are amongst us the real lies that are amongst us <laughs> i just uh, Holy Manuel Ice, Lassie, Jah, Rastafari.